Good morning, sports fans. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Sadi, and today I'm going to show you how to make a clean and simple intro animation in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. This tutorial is for absolute beginners, no prior experience necessary. I'm going to show you my personal workflow and give you some pro tips as well. This intro was made for John's Films, an amazing YouTube channel for DaVinci Resolve run by John Dottridge. Let's check out the intro and let's get started. Let's go ahead and fire up DaVinci Resolve. Guys, this tutorial is going to be filled with pro tips for you. Studio version of free doesn't matter. The free version does almost everything just as well. Go ahead and hit new project. Give it a name. And hit create. First thing we want to do is set up our project. So go ahead and hit this cog wheel down here project settings. I'm going to choose 1920 as my uh, resolution and 30 frames a second as my frame rate. 24 if you're working with film, 30 is good for broadcast television and the internet, and 60 if you're working with slow motion or action sports. Go ahead and click on media pool right here and import any files that you may have and hit OK. And then right click on the media pool, click on new fusion composition. We're going to call it intro. And I will give it a duration of 15 seconds. May not need that. But pro tip here, it's always better to make the clip longer and trim it down than to make it short and have to stretch it later. Go ahead and drag this fusion composition onto your timeline. Park your playhead on top of it, and then go ahead to the Fusion tab. So this is your Fusion UI. You can go ahead and disable this navigation, page navigation on the bottom by clicking on Workspace and choose Show Page Navigation. You can switch between pages by choosing these shortcuts. They're right here in case you don't remember. Shift 4 for the edit page, Shift 5 for Fusion, and so on. So if I wanted to go back to, to the edit page, I could just click on Shift 4, Shift 5, back to the Fusion page. Let's go ahead and talk about the Fusion page layout just to get you familiar with what's going on. On top here, you have your panels. So Media Pool, and you can just click on them and they're pretty self-explanatory. The three things that you're going to use most of the time are the Viewer area, the Flow area where you're going to make your nodes, and the Inspector, which is for the properties of each node selected. Underneath the viewer, you have your timeline, your transport controls. There's a Fusion toolbar for commonly used nodes. I'm going to go ahead and disable it because it doesn't have all the nodes. Let's go ahead and create a new node. I'm going to type background or just the BG. As you can see, it has a shortcut. So BG and pipe this into my media out. I'm going to hit F2 to rename this first node and call it Settings. In the Settings, I'm going to choose Black Color and Completely Transparent Alpha. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on the second tab, the Image tab. Here, I can choose the color Bit Depth. And I'm going to change this to Float 16. Half Float is going to have a ton of information for us. Now, if you're using a lot of blurs and glows, you might want to switch to full float, but that's going to slow you down a little bit. And then down here, I'm going to choose uh, sRGB as my color space because this intro is going to be viewed on YouTube. Next, I'm going to hit shift spacebar and type transform or just XF to make a transform node. And then I'm going to pipe it into my composition all the way at the end and rename it, call it null. Basically, this is going to let me size up, scale, and position my composition overall for everything that's happening in it. Let's go ahead and hit this icon right here on the top right corner, dual viewer. 
and this is going to give me another viewer here. I'm going to go into my media pool and show you what I'm working with. So this is the design of the final intro that I made. Let's go ahead and start creating this from scratch. Now, in this particular case, I already have the intro that I made, so I can see it in my second viewer. But if you didn't have it, the second viewer is useful for looking at things that maybe the client sent you as a reference, or the client's logo, or sometimes you might have an inspiration that you want to have up on the screen as a reference for your own design. All right, let's go ahead and set up our design. Fusion uses nodes instead of layers, but they both do the same thing. Let's go ahead and uh, create a background node, BG. And also, let's create a text node. Now, when you type text, it gives you two options, text 3D and text plus, which is 2D. I'm going to choose 2D. So that's that. Now, how do I put the black background on the bottom and the text on top of it? You create layers with a merge node. If you're having trouble with this concept, especially if you're coming from the Adobe camp, just think of a, a merge node as a layer node. So let's go ahead and pull up a merge node. And then we're going to pipe in the background into the yellow input. And the text is going to go on top, which is the green input. Now, let's go ahead and view this. Now you have the black background on the bottom and the text on top. So that's how you create layers in a node-based system. Now I'm going to drag this merge node down onto the pipe, and you'll see the colors of the pipe will change. And that means it's inserted. So I'm going to choose the background and pipe it into the foreground here. And click on the media out and hit 2 on my keyboard. Or I can just drag it into the viewer and that's going to display my black background. So right now, in my composition, my settings and my transparent background, and that's on the bottom, and then the black background is on top. I'm gonna to go ahead and rename by hitting F2, black background. Now I'm going to take the text, and I'm going to drop the output onto the merge, and this will create another merge. This is another way of doing it. And now my text is on top. Go ahead and click on text and type. There you go. And now I need another one for films. So I'm going to copy text and merge and control C, control V, and then just drag it down. And this is going to add that in there. Click on text, move it to the side, click the other one. Films. Okay, and then there's another text that I need to copy and paste. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. There you go. I'm going to move this down a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and rename some of these nodes. As I go, pro tip for you, always rename your nodes as you go, because once your comp composition gets really large, it's going to get really confusing. Let's go ahead and change some of these text settings. The first text. The second text. And the third. Okay, let's go ahead and start making some shapes. The way to create shapes in Fusion is with masks. You would create a background node, and then you would put a mask on it. So I'm going to create a small line by creating a background, and then creating a rectangle mask on top of it. And then I'll change the color to orange, and I will pipe this into my flow. Then I can change the width of my mask to create my shape just how I want it. And I want another one of these, which is going to be the horizontal shape. 
I'm just going to take a copy of the first one and change the shape in the, in the mask. Now, before I move on, let me show you a little pro tip on how to work with colors in Fusion. If you're working with your client's logo colors or a swatch that your, your client gave you or something that you want to use in your project, you want to have it open in your project as you're working. This is how I would do it. Here's a little macro I made for color swatches. And this is what it looks like. So let me show you, let me ungroup this and show you what it actually is. It's nothing but a bunch of background nodes with some uh, colors in it. So I can put it on the side as I'm working and I can use the colors from that. So how would I use this in this project? So let me grab the logo and show you how to do this. So I'm going to click on one of the colors in my swatch and pick screen color, take that color. I'm going to take another one and change the color to whatever is my logo color. And now you have the orange right here and the blue right here. Okay. You can delete the logo. I can group this back up. I don't need this. And I can just leave it on the side and go back to my composition. If you guys want to use this swatches macro, let me know in the comments and I will uh, post it in the description so you guys can download it and use it. Let me go ahead and rename uh, these lines. So the first one is the vertical line. And the second one is the horizontal line. And then I'm going to go ahead and change the color to match exactly what my logo's color was. So go ahead and hit pick screen color and take the color from the swatch. There you go. And then the second one. Let me pull up the reference in the second viewer. Next, I'm going to show you a pro tip on how to align things in Fusion. Uh, even though there's no built-in rulers, all you have to do is just create a background. Put a mask on it, rectangle, pipe it in. And then I'm going to change the color to a chroma green and make the width really, really, really thin. And the height can be 100. So this can show me visually where the center of my composition is. I can do the same thing, copy and paste for my horizontal uh, center. So go ahead and make the width. And I'm holding down the shift key to make small changes. There you go. All right, let's go ahead and work on this design. So in order to shy some of the layers or nodes, uh, it's called pass through in Fusion or control P. So if I wanted to shy these nodes, I would hit control P and that would hide them. I can hide this as well and just leave my two texts out and then go ahead and align them. So they're already in the vertical center. I'm just going to move this over a little bit and go ahead and move this over like that. I'm going to give it some tracking. That looks good. Okay. And then here's my horizontal control P to unhide or unshy it. And then the width can be as long as the words, like so. I don't need it to be that thick. This looks good. I'm going to make it a little bit narrower. And that's good. The second one probably needs a little bit more tracking. Go ahead and do that. Mm, that looks good. Okay. And then I'm going to work on the line in the middle. So go ahead and control P on those nodes. Click on the mask. It can be thinner. So like that. I don't need this right now. So I'm going to 
take my green lines and hide them. Control P. Vertical line. Thinner. Height will be as tall as the letters. So it's about perfect right there. A little thinner. And that looks good. Last text was on the bottom. Control P to unhide. Now I can go ahead and align it right about here. This looks good. I'm actually not happy with the size. I think the size needs to be a little bit smaller. And the tracking. Okay, this is actually the next day. I had to pause my recording because my neighbor decided to um, invite all his uh, friends over with their Harleys and couldn't record because of the noise. Uh, apparently, they haven't gotten the memo on social distancing. Anyways, uh, let's go ahead and start animating this. And a pro tip, before you start animating, you want to set up your scene uh, and align it just exactly the way you want because once you start animating, things can get all over the place. First thing I'm going to do is hide uh, the stuff that I'm not going to be using. So let's go ahead and animate the vertical line, this one first, and then everything else next. So I'm going to choose all my text, hit Control P to hide it, and then I'm also going to Control P for the horizontal bar. So now I'm left with this one. Next, what I'm going to do is take a copy of this rectangular mask. So choose the mask, Control C, Control V, and it's right there. And it's sitting right on top of it. So there are two masks. They're exactly the same. Then I'm going to go ahead to the inspector and choose subtract from the second mask. So now, wherever the second mask is, it's, it's going to subtract the values from the mask underneath. I will move in the reverse order, which means I'm going to move the second mask up. This is going to reveal my bar, and then I'm going to go back. Okay, frame zero, and I can see that right here. And I'm going to click on this diamond shape uh, button for the position. And then I'm going to go to frame 30 and move this up right here. Next, what I'm going to do, if I play it, before I do, let me shrink my render range, this little yellow bar right here. This is the range that I'm going to loop my playback. So if I click on rewind and hit play, it's just going to go up and then it's going to repeat from zero to 40. And that's what I want. Next, what I want to do is give it some easing because right now it's moving in a linear way. So for that, I'm going to click on the spline editor. Let me go ahead and make some room here. The first thing you should do is click on these three uh, dots here and make sure that you have chosen show only selected tool. That way you don't have a lot of um, tools showing in your spline editor. And then go ahead and hit whatever property it is that you're trying to change. Okay. And then this button here uh, sort of fits everything into view. Let me make some more room. So now, as you can see, the spline is a straight line. And this is called linear animation. So it is the x axis is the passage of time, and the y axis is the change in value, whatever that value might be. So straight line means it's changing and it's changing at the same, same speed. So we're going to go ahead and choose both these keyframes by box selecting them. And then if you hit S or if you hit this button here, what it's going to do is it's going to give you some easing into your curve, meaning there is some acceleration towards the front, and then there's a constant movement in the middle, and then there's some deceleration towards the end. And this is achieved in math, drawing these curves using Bezier curves. Let's go ahead and see what this looks like if you click on it. OK, a little pro tip here for you. You can see that this thing is scrolling, right, as you're looking at the, um, the animation. 
in order for you to uh, make it not do that, go to scale and go to manual. So this is going to stop the scroll. So when you hit play, it's just going to stay where it is. And up here, all these green lines, the view controls, they're kind of in, in the way. So you can go ahead and disable them by hitting this control here. It says show controls. I'm going to turn that off. So now you can see that this bar is animating. It's slowly speeding up, and then it's uh, linear in the middle, and then it's slowing down. The animation that I personally want, let me go ahead and make this linear again by hitting this button here. Uh, the animation that I'm looking for is a linear start, but a deceleration to stop. So that's what I want, okay? And this is what it's going to look like. This is called ease out, meaning it starts fast, but then it decelerates towards the end. Okay, next, I want the text to come out from the sides of this little bar. So I'm going to go ahead and choose my text nodes and hit control P. And now I can see that. And I want the text to come out around, let me move this render range up a little bit. I would say around 30. So let's go ahead and work on the first word. So I'm going to create, click on John's, the text node, and um, shift spacebar, and rectangle. The shortcut is RCT. And then um, you can also grab the, the, the masks from this toolbar as well. So I have the mask now. I'm going to go ahead and hit show control so I can see that. And I will make it the size of the word right here, okay? And I want it to be a little bit longer so that it's touching this. This is perfect. Perfect right there. It doesn't have to be that tall. Okay, so I've chosen this. And what this mask means is that wherever the mask is, is where you'll be able to see through it. So you can see the text. And if you move the text away, it will be hidden. Okay, so the text is still there, but you can't see it because there's a mask on it, right? So at frame 30, I am going to move this up and say around frame 70, I am going to have it up here. So let's go ahead to the inspector. In the second tab here, layout, I'm going to choose that. And here's the property for the position. It's called Center in uh, Fusion. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Animate. So at 70, this is the final position. And then I'm going to work backwards to 30 and animate that. And I'm going to move it out of the way. Right there. Let's go ahead and look at it. Perfect. So now it's doing exactly what I want. It's coming out of that, that vertical bar. The only thing left to do is give it some easing. So I'm going to click on the text, whatever is moving, and I'm going to go to spline, click on fit all, and just take the last keyframe and ease out. Okay, let's go ahead and look at it. Let's do the same thing for the second text. I'm going to save some time by just copy pasting this mask. So control C, control V. I just took this one, the one that was on the first word. I just took the same mask and I'm just going to move this over. Right there. It looks perfect. Okay. Then I'm going to click on text and give it some animation. So remember 70, animate the position. This is my final position. And then I'm going to go backwards to 30, animate, and move this out of the way. Right there. And then while I'm at it, spline, go ahead and grab the last keyframe and decelerate the end. Okay, let's go ahead and view. Perfect. Looking good. So I'm going to use the same concepts here and go ahead and work on the animation for the, the horizontal line as well as the text underneath. So right around, I would say, 
frame 85, this line is going to be this wide. So I'll animate the width and then a few frames back, about 30 frames, I would animate the width to zero. So here it is. And then you can see that it's expanding. And before I view it, let me go ahead and give it a little um, easing. So take the last keyframe and decelerate. Okay. Let's go ahead and view it. Perfect. Next, I want this line, the horizontal line, to come down. Let's do that real quick. I'm going to turn on the next text and then go back here. So it came and expanded and stopped at 85. And then let's go ahead and go to, say, frame 100. And I'm going to animate the position and the first one. Let's say right here, I'm going to animate that. So that will be my start, and this will be my end. And I will move it, move it down. Right here is good. And then give it an easing. I'm going to go ahead and select the last frame and ease out. Let's go ahead and view that. Perfect. Okay, now here comes the interesting part. The text is going to be revealed uh, when this line moves, right? So how do we do that? Let's go ahead and create a rectangular mask on the text. Okay. All right, and then I want this to be as thin as possible, okay? So this mask now is going to reveal the text. So notice that if I move the mask, I can show the text. So the way we're going to do it is with the use of a simple expression. Let me show you how that works. So we're gonna go to the mask for uh, the third text right here. And then we're going to go ahead and click on center, right click, and we're going to give it a expression. Now that you have an expression here, the current value is point brackets, and then this value, and then this value, right? I'm going to change that by connecting it to the point value of this a uh, line that's moving. Since it's not a lot, let me just type it in. I don't really need to pick whip it. So the first line would be this mask. Go ahead and rename this. Let's call it H line mask, horizontal line mask, right? So here, I'm going to say 0 0.5, that's the first value, the x value. The second value, I want it to be h, line, mask, dot, I want to take the center value, dot, y, center with an er, the American way, and then capital y. So that's going to connect this to this bar, okay? Now let's see what happens. If I click on this mask and this mask, and then play this animation, I can see that they are now connected. The mask is moving along with the line, uh, just as I in intended. To align the uh, mask for the text with this line, I'm just gonna go ahead and add a little bit of an offset, 0 0.15 plus. And that should, yep, that should do it. Okay, at this point, the first half of our animation is complete, and this would be the write-on part. And now we're going to create a reverse animation or the write-off part. A quick and dirty way to do it 
is just to do a duplication of the clip. Okay, on the edit page, if you play this animation, you got this, and then what you would do is cut, and then take a copy of this, and make a compound clip so you can play it in reverse like a video, and go to change speed, reverse speed, 100%, okay? Okay, so this is what it looks like. The first clip right on, the second clip right off. So let me go ahead and undo this and show you the other way. Before I do the reverse, let me fine tune this animation and introduce you to the keyframes editor. So right now what I'm seeing is everything is happening uh, one step at a time, one motion at a time, whereas I want some overlapping between the motions. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the vertical line and from zero to 30 easing, that looks actually, that looks really good. And then I'm going to move down to say about 235 and that's where this will stay. And then add 30 frames because that's how long it took to come up. And this value, 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 um, keyframe. So that way it goes exactly where it started. So go ahead and paste that in here. And let's see how this looks. Comes back. Okay. So now what I want to do with these uh, texts is I'm going to pull up the keyframe editor. Okay. And... This is where the, the keyframes are for, for when the text moves out. So it's happening from 30 to 70. I want this to start sooner. So I'm going to choose this keyframe. And right here down uh, on the right bottom corner where it says 30, I'm going to start it at 10. So it's going to start way sooner. And then it's actually going to, right now it's a 70. I'm going to bring it up to 50 so that it's not lasting that long and it's not playing that uh, slow. Same thing with the second text. I'll start it sooner and it'll stop sooner. And then the text has to hide back. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. Uh, from 10 to 50 is when the text is animating on. So this animation is 40 frames long and then it's it, there's a 10 frame uh, gap between the start of the animation and when the text starts. So this should start 10 frames at the end and then 40 frames long. So the animation ended at 265, so I should start around 255 and then go back 40 frames. And that would give me the same values. So let's take the first one. First text, I'm going to go up to 215, animate that, and 255, animate that. So remember, 265 is where the animation ends. So this is 10 frames before that, and 255, 40 frames long. So I'm going to start it at 215. Right here, this, this is the location of the word. And then right here, it's going to go back in. I'm going to get that value from my first keyframe. Copy, and I'll paste it into the last keyframe. Okay. Let's go ahead and see it. There you go. Same thing for the second word. Choose the text. We're going to 215. And animate, and then 255. Animate that, and get the value from the first frame, which is right here. Pop it in here. Okay. And since we're animating these, we have to work on our splines one more time. So. 
I'm going to go ahead and do that. And same thing for the second word. Okay, next let's look at the horizontal line. The animation for the width is from 55 to 85. And I think it's, it's way too slow. It's happening... Uh, th there's a lot of delay, so I'm going to move that up. The way to do that, if you wanted to move the whole thing, you would click on that value, and this would turn into light gray, and then you can move all the keyframes at the same time. Or, if you just want to move one keyframe at a time, click away so it's not highlighted, and then you can take you know, your keyframe and move it one step at a time. So I'm going to put the first keyframe right around 25. So I'm making it start sooner. And the second one was 85. I'm going to make it around 70. And then I have to do the same thing for the reverse. 245. And that was the width. And this was 45 frames long, so I'm going to go to 200 and animate the width. Okay, so 200 would be the same, and then 245 would be width 0. Okay, all right, let's give it a little Bezier curve here. The last keyframe and... Okay, so the first part of this line moving down is from this keyframe to this keyframe. I'm going to move these keyframes a little bit sooner, like I did for the rest. So here is those two keyframes. First keyframe right now is at 77. I'm going to put it at uh, about 60. And the second one at 90. So 30 frames would be good enough. And then I will go and do the same towards the end. So let's do 210 and 180 because it was 30 frames long, this, this part of the animation. And this will stay here. And this value will come from the first keyframe. So we'll go to 60, take that Y value, and go to 210 and place that Y value here. Okay. okay, let's go back and look at our animation so far. Yeah, let's go ahead and save the project in DaVinci Resolve. But here's a pro tip for you. If you go to Fusion and look at the options, it does not give you an option to save your Fusion composition. So this is your Fusion composition. These are the guides. I don't really need those anymore delete those. So if you wanted to save your work in Fusion, how would you do that? The easiest way to do it is just copy all your nodes, control C, and then take a simple text notepad and paste them in there. Okay, it's going to look like this, but you don't care. You're not editing all this. It's just saved all your composition. And when you want it back, you can just cop copy this out of it and paste it back into your composition. This particular particle background was a free background that I got from Pixabay. If you want to use the same file, you can do that. Uh, or if you want to use something that you've created, you can do that as well. Let's head on over to the edit page and take our particle file. And now there's a black background underneath uh, our Fusion Comp, which we don't want to use. Okay, that's one way to do it. If you want, you can use something that you've created of your own. So on my channel, there's a playlist for free Fusion backgrounds. And let's say I want to use something that I did earlier. And just go to the um, description and you can download the video file. So I'm going to go ahead and import that file in here. 
and and then I can place my animation right on top of it. Or you can create one from scratch if you want. There you have it, a clean and simple intro animation made in DaVinci Resolve Fusion with all the basics covered. Now go out there, create your own intro animations, and share with the community. I'm Sadi, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.